Hello, mis amores. I'm Vincent, and you're watching. <laughs> Today, I thought it would be nice to continue a series that I started years ago, probably, and I think there have only been maybe two videos in that series, but it can keep growing. I really enjoy this series just because it's more so for lazy cooking people. Maybe lazy is the wrong word also. Time efficient. Mm, not even necessarily, it depends on the recipe, but more so I like my kitchen clean whenever I cook it, especially when I eat. Like I can't eat if the kitchen isn't clean. Only using one pot for that really helps, so maybe it's not lazy. Lazy in a way that you don't have to clean multiple pots and stuff, so that's nice. And for that reason, here we are today, judging more of those recipes. And without further ado, we're gonna start with the first one, which I've only chosen because it looks like something that I really, really enjoy. <laughs> And that is a mushroom risotto. Thinking about it, a mushroom risotto really also is a one pot recipe because you don't need more than that. We're gonna make a one pot creamy mushroom orzo without the cream because it's vegan. Oh. Is it gonna be creamy? No. Yes. Okay, show us. Oh, tensions rising. Damn. I work well under pressure. Do I? I'll tell you what you need. Of course, of course, some mushrooms. About 300 grams of portobello mushrooms. These aren't portobello mushrooms. About 400 grams of orzo, uncooked. About two white onions, chopped obviously. As well as about three to four cloves of garlic. About 800 milliliters of vegetable stock. A teaspoon of mixed herbs. I don't really know what that is, but I'm just gonna put some dried herbs in there. 300 grams of silken tofu, which I've never bought. I love silken tofu. Yeah, why? The silken tofu is what's gonna make our creamy orzo creamy without the cream. One teaspoon of mustard and one teaspoon of miso paste. The juice of one lemon. Salt and pepper, butter, and I've just realized that this is supposed to be a vegan recipe, so I'll use vegan butter. Don't worry, I have some of that too. And some parsley. Parsley, if you know what I mean. No one's ever made that joke before, I'm sure. I've chopped everything, and so we're ready to go over to our pot. Or maybe a pan, actually. On our, guys, we're gonna have to do some blitzing. The silken tofu, the miso paste, and the honey, salt and pepper, and the lemon juice. Good luck. That worked, hallelujah. Now we can go over there. I'm not sure if this pen will be big enough, but living life on the edge, right? Pressure. We love pressure. I feel like my onion was a little bit too big. <laughs> We're gonna need more onion later, but I think that's just a little bit too much for the amount of food that I'm gonna make right now. I actually think this one really is a lazy recipe because you don't need a lot. Chopping is a little bit annoying, but apart from that, it should be really quick to make. I'm gonna add a little bit of vegan butter now. Then we add the mushroom and we're gonna cook that on low for 10 to 15 minutes. So long. There won't be any mushroom left. Hello, it's been about 10 minutes. We're now gonna add our orzo. Mix it well. Done. <laughs> I'm joking. Now pour over your vegetable broth. It's ours. Yours, mine, ours. Then also add your silken tofu mix. Oh no guys, I totally forgot the mixed herbs. We're just gonna add them now. Mix it in. Also add your parsley. Mixy, mixy, mixy. And then we bring this to a boil. Once it's boiling, reduce the heat. Give it another stir, stir, stir. Well, and now technically cover it with a lid. Unfortunately, we don't have a big enough lid for this pan. Surely this can just sit here, right? I don't know what to do. <laughs> Surely this works, right? This is fine, right? We're just gonna let that simmer for around 15 minutes and then we're done. That was really easy. Hope it's just as good. That was the wrong intonation. Hope it's just as good. Should be done. <laughs> Oopsies. You know what, maybe I should have checked up on it. And we are done. Our first one pot recipe has been a success so far. I mean, there haven't been a lot of steps where something could have gone wrong, but I'm glad that we've made it till the end. 
<laughs> this is what it looks like. See, that's why I said it looked like risotto, because it does. It also sounds creamy. It looks really good, and I'm hungry. What, what a, a coincidence. coincidence. And seeing as though this is a one pot recipe, I don't think we need a plate. Maybe I should add a little bit more butter. It's not a risotto, Vincent. This is very salty, <laughs> but that's my fault. <laughs> this is really, really nice. I like this. Very hearty and warm, soul-fulfilling <laughs> food. <laughs> and simple. I don't know what else to say. This is really good. Make sure your broth isn't too salty, then you're fine. Off to a really, really great start. And I hope this sets the tone for the rest of the video. Before we find that out, I gotta pee. Hello, we sind zurück with a great recipe, I hope. Maybe I take that back for what I said in the beginning because I think most of these recipes really are kind of on the lazier side. <laughs> they might not be time efficient, but you don't have to do a lot. I see that as a win. This next one is gonna be a golden onion in spring veg pilaf. Pilaf, pilaf. A rice dish, it's gonna be good. And it's hopefully gonna be flavorful, even though I Got two spices, because I thought we still had them. But I'm not even gonna mention them when I tell you what you need, because then you don't know what's missing. Aha ha, fooling you. Let's get this started in here. Let's get this started in here. We're gonna start off with the rest of our onion and some crushed garlic. So technically, you're supposed to peel the onion and discard the first tougher outer layer, then halve and slice as thinly as possible. I'm left with this onion from the first recipe, but do as I just said. <laughs> 100 grams of fine green beans, one teaspoon of cumin seeds. I'm just gonna take a bit of ground cumin. <laughs> one teaspoon of ground coriander, one teaspoon of ground turmeric, one bay leaf, 250 grams of basmati rice, 450 milliliters of veggie stock, 100 grams of frozen peas, defrosted, and lastly 100 grams of spinach. You also need 50 grams of butter. And chaos. Chaos is essential. <laughs> that was a knife. The first step takes a while, so let's get it started. You know, I live for the thrill. The thrill of it all was Sam Smith. I forgot how that song goes. Running out of pants. This is the second pan we're using. <laughs> I'm not certain how well this step is gonna go, seeing as though our onion looks a bit different. We're just gonna pretend that it looks how it's supposed to look. We start by heating up some butter, add the onion and a good pinch of salt. And now, medium heat, we stir until it becomes golden brown and caramelized, which can take up to 30 minutes. I'll see you then. Goodbye. Adios. Hasta luego. Y nos vemos at some point. I think this has been cooked enough. I think they're like golden brown or more importantly, not burned yet. And I'm, I'm afraid they might burn. So let's just go with this. We're just gonna stir in the beans and the garlic and let them cook for about two minutes. After two minutes, we're gonna add the spices and the bay leaf. Let that cook for another minute. After that, we're gonna add the rice. Stir, stir, stir. Cover with the, whoa, veggie stock. Cook on the low for about 15 minutes. Don't worry though, because this time, the lid fits. Later. Oopsies, 15 minutes are over and I forgot that I had to stir in the peas and the spinach during the last three minutes of those 15 minutes. But we love soft rice. Mm. This smells so good, but it also smells very Indian. I feel like the flavors and also the spices are quite Indian. So maybe it's not Turkish after all. Also, I didn't chop the spinach. And here you have it, our golden onion and spring veg pilaf. Pilaf, something like that. <laughs> Does it not look really great? This camera is really shitty, so it doesn't look very colorful. Ooh, but maybe here. Yeah, that's more like it. Got everything. I feel like I need some yogurt with it or so already. Mmm. Mmm. Mmm, yummy! I feel like the flavors could be a little bit more intense. Still, I do need to eat it with something like maybe yogurt or something on top, really. I can't even say anything. Like, this is really good. Also, we kind of live for the drama. Luckily, we've got one more recipe, and that recipe might, might just stir up some drama. Hi, Guten Tag! 
Ich bin's mal wieder. We're gonna make recipe number three. Lasagne? Type of. What a spoiler. Um, <laughs> for the first time in the history of my life, we're gonna make a recipe by Jamie Oliver. Is he cancelled? I make his eggs on a daily basis. On his website, he has like a full on category with, I think, 194 or so. One pot of recipes. I had a couple to choose from, but I chose like the fourth one because <laughs> I just like the name. It's Scruffy Veg Lasagne. Ooh, there's a quote. Making the most of frozen veg. That's his voice, by the way. This lovely rustic lasagne is a joy to make and eat with layer upon layer of perfectly cooked pasta and oozy cheese sauce and crunchy topping it's a thing of beauty he has the worst stuff <laughs> ever but he's so excited in german always no 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 his german dub voice <laughs> and um, anyway let's shut up jamie yeah guys so essentially Jamie! I don't know if this is a bit cheating. I mean, yes, we make it in one pot, but then we have to put that pot or pan into the oven. So I feel like that's a two-step thing, which, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Here's what you need for it. One leak of my nudes. Uh, we had the same show. Uh, yeah? You also need one teaspoon of dried mint. Um, I only have fresh mint because where do you even get dried mint? Olive oil. I don't have here right now, but I have it. 160 grams of mature cheddar cheese. 50 grams of stale bread. Is that just old bread? Well, I didn't have that, so I just toasted some fresh bread, which I also already bit a bit off of. Well, don't judge me. Two heaped tablespoons of plain flour. Two teaspoons of English mustard or just a bit of Naomi's mustard that I'm stealing. One liter of semi-skimmed milk. 300 grams of frozen peas and 300 grams of frozen broccoli. And of course, 250 grams of lasagna sheets. He uses a casserole pan because you obviously have to put it in the oven. I don't have a pan that you can put in the oven except for this grill pan situation. So we're just gonna do that and hope that it's fine. And go over there because it's time to get started. Love how we went from quite a lot of spices to like no spices. <laughs> you can already preheat the oven by the way to 200 degrees Celsius. Into our wannabe casserole pan we're gonna put some olive oil, put it on like medium heat. Then we are going to add the leek and the mint. <laughs> Nothing happens. We're gonna season it with salt and pepper. So now we're gonna have to cover it <laughs> <laughs> with a lid that works and let it fry for about five minutes or until it's cooked we're gonna stir constant not constantly but every now and then and if needed we will add a splash of water excellente now stir the flour into the leek <laughs> nice followed by the mustard and then slowly stir in the milk to give you a loose white sauce not that easy to stir with these ridges. Then add half of the cheese and then, and I quote, let it blib away for a couple of minutes. Season to perfection with some salt and black pepper. Finally, we stir in the frozen broccoli and peas. I'm not sure why they had to be frozen, but here we are. I made the broccoli pieces a little bit smaller. It's time for the pasta. We snap in some pasta pieces. Mix them in for a little bit. I don't know, I guess they should be coated. Then we pull some of the sheets to the top to create a top layer. And finally, we toss the remaining cheddar and the bread, which I've cut into these breadcrumbs on top. Finish with a drizzle of olive oil and bake this in the oven for about 20 minutes or until golden brown and bubbling. It's hot and heavy and it's done. Ta-da! That looks like something. You can add more cheddar now if you want because what else am I gonna do with this cheddar? 
Well, I wanted to melt. Now I'm gonna have to put it back in for like a minute or two. <laughs> okay guys, this looks fantastic. Actually, it doesn't, but it looks good. I hope the pasta is cooked. And I, even more so than that, hope that it'll be good so that I don't have to cook Jamie Oliver. Jamie Oliver? More like Jamie over. Ooh, the breadcrumbs actually are crunchy, you know? The pasta isn't as soft as with normal lasagna. Cheers, everyone. Actually, cheers in like a minute because this is quite hot. Mmm, the breadcrumb. This is pretty good. It's not quite my taste. It tastes very, mmm, German. <laughs> with the leek and broccoli, it's giving German. <laughs> I really like the breadcrumbs in there, actually. Yeah, maybe this also needs a bit more seasoning, maybe some garlic, but I feel like if you've got a family and are quite busy with having a family, <laughs> this could be a nice family dinner because it is fairly easy and quick and tastes good. And honestly, with the amount of work and ingredients that we put in, which is both not a lot, I think we can be really happy with the result. <laughs> These breadcrumbs really do it for me. Pariah, before my tummy riots a little too much. <laughs> I'm gonna leave this video here with three really successful recipes. But if I remember correctly, all of the one put recipes that I've created thus far have been quite successful in general. I think my favorite one was definitely the mushroom one. This here is nice as well. And you know what else is nice? Seeing me here la proxima vez. Thank you so much for watching this video. Bye guys. <laughs>